Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Trust God, cry, repeat. Hey, ladies, this is Nyoka Hall, and I want to welcome you to Trust God, Cry, Repeat podcast, a fresh new podcast for your encouragement. Today's topic is entitled Watch Your Mouth. Let's dive in. What do you do often and always? Do you often have to stop and figure out how you got back to the same place? Do you have feelings of discouragement? or exhaustion? Are you easily angered? Are you often offended? Are you short with your husband or your children? Are you in a poor disposition? All while saying you're a Christian. Do you find yourself saying things that are damaging instead of helpful? Ladies, I want to encourage you today to watch your mouth. I want to encourage you ladies to stop destroying your hope with repeating the lies of Satan. Let us be architectural wordsmiths, forging right perspectives on the things that are going on in our lives. Instead of demolitionists, skillfully laying down the very things that will destroy your latest victories. We are living in a time where we cannot afford to lend our words or our power to Satan to exploit because that's what he likes he likes for us to listen to his lies and then repeat them out of our mouth because it's a trading a a really surrendering of our power over to him not only to steal kill and destroy but to also just distort what's true for us it's also to steal the peace that surpasses all understanding because the bible says that that's ours if to guard our hearts and minds through him it, the scripture talks about all these things on how to resist the devil and he'll flee. But a lot of times I, I believe because I know that I fall prey to it and then I have to go back to the word of God to get refocused. But I know for sure that it's really easy to go through something difficult and then start saying all the things of how this is probably going to go and where this is going to lead and all these other things that really don't help. It's really a trading of our power power and authority to Satan and we don't want to do that anymore we want to make sure that we are silencing the lies of Satan I want to encourage you ladies don't let your circumstances get you to repeat wrong things incorrect information in your home don't be a vessel to tear down your own home with your own hands just like in um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 3 through 6, I want to encourage you with scripture always. Chapter 3, I mean, verse 3, excuse me, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought ladies every thought captive or into captivity this translation says to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled again that's second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 through six another portion of scripture is comes uh, from proverbs chapter 14 and one and it says the wisest of women builds her house but folly with her own hands tears it down I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that type of woman. I want to be obedient to the scriptures. I want to make sure that I'm building up my husband and encouraging him and I'm helping him. I want to make sure that I'm nurturing my babies that God has blessed me with. I'm I'm praying. um, I'm praying daily, multiple times a day to have right perspective, to make sure that I don't fall for the delusional nonsense that's going on or stir fry foolishness. I'm sure you've heard me say before, you know, of this culture, I want to make sure that I'm sober minded. I don't want to be drunk off of Satan's lies. I want to make sure that I'm standing sober minded, ready to have good warfare. Who's with me? Remember, ladies, who you serve. You serve the Lord God Almighty. The Lord God, remember that he is mighty in battle. 
We just have to make sure that we are in position, ready and willing to, to stand and to stand firm. Ladies, I want to let you know that our words can be like seeds for life or envenomed drops of poison. And, you know, I'm a wordy and a nerdy all the time. Um, so that's my new word. You guys can look it up. It's envenomed. I don't want my words. I don't want my thoughts to turn to where they are envenomed. I don't want them to be like drops of poison being just sprinkled around my household. I want to make sure that my words bring life to the situation. I want to make sure that I'm operating out of, you know, the, the power of God. I want to make sure that I am not falling prey to the enemy because guess what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Read your word, ladies. He's already defeated. But back to our topic, back to our topic. When you make, I want to uh, caution you because it's something that um, in the middle of us, I think we were getting ready for dinner a few days ago, but it, it just kind of popped in my head. I wanted to write it down to share. When you make service in your home transactional, you lose the whole purpose of why you do what you do. Like, okay, my house runs well if this, 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 and this gets done by this person. You know, we don't want that transaction. You do this, I do this, everything's fine. No, if I have to do 55 tasks that day, you know, and my kids, for whatever reason, can only do the five combined, you know, that they're supposed to do, I still want to love them well. I still want to serve them with pure motive and pure intention. I still want to build my husband up as far as encouraging him and being his helpmeet, the one that God put in his life. You know, or shall I say the one that was found, you know, found by him. You know, I want to make sure that I am serving well, that I am presenting myself in a way that, again, brings life to my home. Our homes, ladies, should be a place where there is no fallout. I was reading a book by Nancy Wilson. It was so encouraging. It was about um, it was uh, talking about uh, pastors wives and what they can ex you know, go through and how to encourage your husband. It was all good, like all uplifting, all up, uh, all encouraging. Excuse me. And that was one thing that she said in that book. Your house should be a place where there is no fallout. You know, where there is not, it's not a place of destruction. It's not a place of doom, but it's in pl a place of encouragement, a place of reviving. Like you can have the worst day possible, but when you come home, it should bring life, ladies. It should be such an atmosphere that we are used to lifting up the name of the Lord. We are used to opening our Bibles. We are used to encouraging. We are used to taking every thought captive to obey Christ. And we're going to share that, that scripture in a minute. But I'm just saying, ladies, Build your homes wisely. Build your homes wisely. Encourage your family. I want to encourage you also, serve your husband and children out of pure love and devotion to Jesus Christ and with the appreciation for what God entrusted you with. I counted a blessing to be a mother of three. I counted a blessing because I remember being told that it's physically impossible for me to ever conceive. You'll have to tune into another uh, podcast uh, where I share more about my story or hop over to trustgodcurrypeat.com where I'm able to share a little bit further. But I'm grateful for what God has given me, even in the imperfection of, of how things turn out and certain things. But I know that we are intentionally living for Jesus Christ here intentionally i want to share with you ladies and this is not off topic it actually um, matters uh, to our topic because it's important to watch how you treat the little members of your household and i mean that like don't treat them if they are not um confessing christ yet i mean i mean young babies like the little toddlers young kindergartners you know elementary school encourage them in the lord encourage them that they are in the fold they are in your household and as for me and my house i will serve the lord encourage them with the content that they listen to and the content they enjoy shall all give glory to god the songs that they are singing shall all give glory to god and i want to share and it's not out of pride it's out of gratefulness 
it's out of gratefulness because if you know my my youngest baby my youngest blessing story um you know that she um <laughs> she had a heart condition or has a heart condition and you can hear like I said the rest of her story but today this this part of it I want to share that a few days ago um she woke me up and she was talking about because we have been we talk about Christ all the time we you know we read we the things we do the things we listen to we listen to Christian music only christian music only the thing she watches all points back to christ so the, the other day i handed it to my husband i'm like baby praying in this area because it seems like god is pulling you know pulling at her heart and she's only four years old so i'm like okay uh, we always prayed from the youngest i mean from our oldest all the way down we've always uh prayed god please save them young please save them young. I know I wasn't saved as a young child. Um, it was later on in life. I don't want that for them, Lord. If it's your will, I know it is for, for all to be saved, Lord, if they submit to you. So I pray, he prayed, and we've been praying over her for, for years since she was born. <laughs> you know, so this particular morning, she was like, mom, because I told her, we talked about it before. We talked about, you know, surrendering to the Lord. We talked about um, giving our lives to Christ and how we do that. We've talked about baptism because she was intrigued with baptism she um we talked about all these things right so I told her um about a couple weeks ago or about a week and a half ago I said you you know you let me know whenever you're ready and we'll pray together that's what I told her so a few days ago she comes wakes me up she's talking to me you know it's like you know kindergartners do and she was like mom I'm ready and you know, if you're a parent of a younger kid, they say some random stuff. So you don't know kind of where that's going. You're ready for what? It's early in the morning, blase, blase. But she said, no, mom, I'm ready. I'm ready to pray. And at home, <laughs> she was in her room. We went to pray and she asked the Lord to be her Lord and Savior. She repented of her sins and she 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 said that she knows that Jesus died and rose. She said her little four year old words, um, but she knows and she wants him to be the leader of her life. So I, I shared that to encourage you, ladies, keep praying over your children excuse me, I had a little tickle in my throat. I'm not crying. You are. Um, so keep praying with your children. Keep encouraging your children. It's all, it's not all for naught. Cause that it seems like the biggest thing that the enemy wants to push is discouragement. He wants you to speak out your mouth when things don't go right, how this is going to end for your children. I rebuke that in Jesus name. Make sure that even in the difficult times you are saying, but you will grow into, to be a godly young man. I tell my son that you are a hero. You're not a villain. You know, I tell my daughters this that you will you will serve the Lord I mean you they're all now saved and feel you know filled so I'm saying honor God in all that you do encourage them if they fall off as far as um you know they're having a rough day or they do something that's not really according to um how you think it should go encourage them get them back on get them back on point to where they should go it's not all for not because they're not perfect because newsflash none of us are I just want to encourage you ladies continue to pour out for your children continue to encourage them and the Lord continue to build them up I also want to say again remember to watch your mouth they are listening they are listening they really are I want you also to take notice of what you say most often do you re rehearse scripture most often or do you go to the negative I want you to I just want you to take notice because I had to do that in my own life. I want you to see um, what you let escape. Is it frustration? Um, is it uh, thoughts of sickness or being scared or worrying about those things? Is it discouragement? Is it self deprecating thoughts or or buying into Satan's life? So where he makes you think or feel some type of way? Um, all those things dressed up as truths because that's how he kind of comes. You know, um, is it those things that come up often and always? Um, is it the, the list of all the ways you've fallen short in that day or even listing all the ways they've fallen short in that day? I encourage you. I really do encourage you to watch your mouth. Is what you're saying or rehearsing and the things that are flowing from your lips, is it stealing, killing and destroying things in your life? The answer is found and you coming clean before the almighty God. Then applying the scriptures to your life. Because we know if it's stealing, killing, and destroying, we know that's not of God. 
we know that's not of God. So don't be ignorant of the devil's devices, ladies. I want to encourage you with John chapter 10 and 10. It says, uh, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and that, ha um, excuse me, and have it abundantly. Remind yourself of the scriptures, ladies. Remind yourself. I want you also to remember to submit to God and allow the word of God to heal you. Let the word of God heal you. Those areas in which we don't even want to mumble to another living soul. Allow God's work because it will. It will go deeper than you will ever expect anything else to go. Allow God and his word to heal you. Allow your words to match your confession of Christ and Christianity. There is a blessing. Remember, ladies, there is a blessing in community. So as I always say, reach out to someone else. Let them know that you are glad they're still alive. Let them know that you are grateful to even be able to, you know, lift up the name of Jesus with them. Fellowship. Enjoy a meal. <laughs> Beat them in a board game. I don't know. You know, just reach out and make sure you stay connected because that is another divisive thing that the enemy is using to separate, to isolate women so he can try to destroy them. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Don't stand for it. Fight to stay connected. I want to encourage you ladies to fight to stay connected. I want to always encourage you if you have a, a question or just want to reach out and say, hey, go over to trustgodcryrepeat.com. And if you can't get me through that way, because uh, you know how inter the Internet is sometimes, I don't know. Um, go over to my email, trustgodcryrepeat at gmail.com. Again, it's trustgodcryrepeat at gmail.com. I just want to encourage you ladies trust always God, to trust God as you cry. And repeat, God bless you. God,